Adventure Gear by Climb, because sometimes you have to learn things the hard way. Connected. For, since you were a wee little sprout, huh? Yes, since I was knee high to a grasshopper. So what bikes were in your stable back in the day? The very first bike I was ever on in my life was a 69 Triumph Bonneville. A neighbor had it. My mom lost her mind when my dad let me go on the bike, because when I came back, they were fighting. Uh -huh. And she grabbed me and hugged me, and I didn't know what happened. You let him go on a motorcycle. I was like eight. <laughs> <laughs> scared to death and this guy was wheeling doing wheelies and see it. you know just modified uphill guy he my first real bike was a mini cycle it was a Yamaha 60 mini cycle and uh, I just rode that thing until the wheels came off I mean just that was my baby 74 Norton cool uh, commando which is my prized possession I've had it for 15 years now Triumph Thruxton Heavily modified. Uh, it's an 04. It was the first year of the Thruxton. Um, and then moving on, uh, KTM 690. That's a, Adventure R. That's a sweet bike. One of my favorite go-to bikes ever. I mean, if you're going to go 20 miles away from your house and hit the trails all day and then drive 20 miles back, that's the bike. You know, If you're going to ride 400 miles and do three days of camp, and probably not. People do it, but... And then I have a um, 350 Husqvarna Enduro, FE 350, and, uh, and then the GS, Darth. This bike is I named, aptly named Darth because it is definitely from the dark side, as you can tell. Pretty much everything on it so far is black. Look, well, helmet head. In fact, I love it all. That's my problem. I love all motorcycles. And that becomes a problem for me at times. So growing up, who were your heroes? Did you have a, a guy? Evil Knievel, man. Was it? Yeah, were you of watch course. That, was, it, was it the clothes? The no, it was suit? the balls that that guy had. <laughs> and the fact that he, he was on, was on Harley most of the time, Evil Knievel? Harley, a Triumph. He had a Triumph. Yeah, man, it was like my buddy and I would, you know, get our bicycles and build ramps and jump, try to jump and crash and tear our knees up and <laughs> if it's, we bled it was cool <laughs> it's good for you when you're a kid <laughs> yeah. less so now less so now yeah so what about when you got a little older any yard sales i mean i've crashed a few times on dirt bikes <clears throat> to the point where i had to fly back from the tour one time Ooh. and uh, that freaked me out a little bit i lost a lot of my guts because i was fairly fearless before that and uh that just uh, the bike came down on me and the peg went straight into my knee. Uh, it just, and I had pads on, but it just slipped right under the pad, bam, you know? And uh, so that really, that scared me pretty bad for a while. But yeah, I've broken a few things. I've twisted things up, you know? And, and so when did, when did music hit you? When, when was Ricky Rocket born? I can remember exactly <clears throat> when there was a turning point. I had, uh, my sister was babysitting for me. She was nine years older than me. And she was right in the middle of the hippie era, you know. And uh, I came home one night, 10 minutes late, okay, and she was babysitting for me. That was her perfect excuse to send me to my room and not have to deal with me and be able to have her friends over and smoke strawberry tobacco. She stuck me in there, and she must have felt a little bit bad because she brought in a record player and a couple Beatles records. And eight days a week, I listened to it about 50 times and started playing on a phone book 
and anything I could find in my bedroom to it. And I said, that's what I want to do. I'm going to play drums. Like that minute, like I, I don't, that night. So it's like I've thanked my sister for punishing me a few times. So how, how old are you? <laughs> Nine, maybe. So you're thin? Something like that. Drums, huge passion. Motorcycles, obviously, it's what connected us. There's another passion floating around, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That's not widely known. When we lived in a warehouse in downtown LA, there was a girl that got raped and we um, called the cops and got the guy busted. And a bunch of his friends came the next night to kill us because we got him thrown in jail. And uh, there was a guy, <clears throat> there was five guys, one of them was with a knife and he was up in my face. And I swore that when that episode was over, I swore that I would learn how to defend against a knife. So you've been studying Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for nearly years. 20 years. Yeah. What's going on with Poison right now? You guys are in a semi hiatus, right? We're talking about touring. This is the 30th anniversary. And you've put it out there to the Poison camp that you're ready to go. You're riding bikes with the likes of me, training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but you're not bored because there's a new project happening too. You've got Devil City Angels. Devil City Angels, yeah, so, we started that thing a year ago. Who's in the band? It's me, hello, uh, <laughs> Tracy Guns, Rudy Sarzo, and Brandon so Gibbs. So tell me about Brandon, where did he come from? He played, uh, him and his brother had a, uh, like a hard rock blues bass band. I said, I really like these kids. My drum tech got their number and stayed in touch and they said, would you produce a demo for us? And I'm like, yeah, that you're in Iowa, I'm in California. They flew out. I'm like, this is rock's best kept secret. This kid can sing, he can play, he can write. Nobody knows about him. I don't want a guy that's been around forever. I want somebody that has a lot of experience, but nobody knows about it. That's a real tough one to find. Of, of all the bikes you've had, all the travels you've done, touring, moto touring, what has been the best ride you've ever done? I always ask, what's the ride of your life? For the last five years that Poison has toured, the five years leading up to the last two years that we didn't tour, we decided at 20 years, we were gonna have our own tour bus. I took my own tour bus, bought a trailer, took a bike every year. And that's when I started to get into this type of riding, where I'll take a tent, sleeping bag, a few things, on a day off, I just take off in some other direction, don't take the hotel room, find a campground somewhere, just ride to it a couple hours, camp out all night, go run around, see things, come back, and then make it back to the show the next day. So, so you'd be rock star, and then during a day off, or a rest day, you'd be tearing up the trails, right. and sleeping face down in a cactus somewhere. Right, and one year I had, well, a couple of years I've had a Triumph and, uh, and a bigger bike out with me usually. Um, and so that just goes on a trailer behind the tour bus. Yeah, so I mean, I started, that is that, that is the life. It's awesome playing it playing awesome. music around the world to adoring fans. Ducati gave me a bike to take out one year. I took a, a, a Ducati Diablo Chromo out. Okay. <clears throat> Had a blast on that. Um, and you're camping off the Diablo? Not off the Diablo. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I had a scrambler. Out okay. Of me too. But um, over 10 years ago, I started the Brit Iron Rebels, which was a club of British motorcycle enthusiasts that were more towards the cafe racer style. We now have over 300 members in 12 countries. Nice. The world. So I still ride with those guys. I've rid ridden with more members, I think, than anybody else because I get to go you travel around. a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, it was motorcycles, motorcycles, motorcycles for me. It's day off, I go ride and go camp out. And then on show days, I have all the Britain and Rebels come down to the show. We'd have the bus out. I'd have a cookout. There'd be six, eight, 10, 20 of us, you know, partying after the show. Yeah, it's pretty cool way to make a living. 
Well done. Randy. Very, very cool. I could just, you know, you want to keep me on the road for 15 months? That's how to do it. <laughs> Brad Barker, the ride of my life. Dot net. Well, that's the episode. Thanks so much for joining me on The Ride of My Life. Do me a favor. Click the subscribe tab below so you can follow us and you won't miss any more episodes. And if you'd like to hear the podcast version of this, you can go to our podcast page on iTunes where we have The Ride of My Life there and you can listen to some bonus tracks there as well. You can reach us at brad at theRideOfMyLife.net and let us know what you think, where you'd like us to feature, if you'd like to come with us or, uh, you know, give us some advice. We'd really like to hear what you have to say. Thanks so much.